this is what it looks like with my tail lights on or brake lights on if I skip back that's no brake lights you'll see when they flash see that flash that red that's when they're on so if I start going forward right they're on right now and he's going he's going they're still on they're still on now they're off and he's still going like 18 million degrees out here all right this is something i found yesterday looking through my logs i noticed i had a misfire because the rpm would climb and drop as it was climbing i decided to change all the plugs out while doing it i found this guy hidden under the fiberglass heat shield a little fiberglass boots you put on these so they don't get burned by the exhaust and I was like huh that might cause a problem there goes right down to the oh, who knows how long I've had this like this like really I, I might have had this for a long time like this and just not realized it but anyways changed out the plug wire and all the plugs and yeah she's running like she's never ran before <laughs> What's up, y'all? I ain't gonna do a full fall. We're just gonna see how much boost we can build off the line. Pump them brakes up real good luck. chains will do and basically what I think happens is when in 4x4 and building a boost on the line on the two-step even in a well maybe not so much when you're in the two-step because the timings pulled but as soon as you let go and it hits the drivetrain and the front diff and the front axles the back of the truck does this number the front of the truck lifts really hard and what i think is happening is that lift is causing the front tires to drop down to the ground while the, the body of the chassis is up in the air causing the cv axles to go from flat angle to an extreme angle and i think that might be uh what's also causing the tie rods to flex and bend and do everything they're doing so a little bit of Home Depot science. Let's see if we can get some ratchet straps to make uh, prevent this from happening. And if that's the case, then yeah, I can weld some chains up in there or just ratchet strap it. And when I'm done, unratchet strap it. We'll see which one works. 
and I put the ratchet strap over the top of the shock tower there. And then on the bottom side, it real sketchily hooks into the bottom, you know. And then I lowered the truck back down and tightened them up. hanging on the shock towers. I just took them off, threw them in the truck. Just to show y'all how easy this actually is. All right, gotta switch hands here. All you gotta do is take your hose, a little siphon in, put it in the tank. Give it a few jerk offs. She's fucking pouring, boy. Yep, the E85 station is a great distance away, so every time I go and fill up the truck, I also bring some cans with me, because that's all I run in this pig. I never did show y'all, right behind that there Dunkin' Donuts is the new tranny cooler, pretty decent one. I just welded up some... Uh, some angle iron and made a little frame for it to sit on and that fan is wired to a switch which I have yet to really put in a permanent home but she moves some air and that's what it took combined with the true cool 40k and that to keep my temperatures in a good range I say good range, but a range that I was comfortable. And now they stay there, so. That's just more uh, progress we're having on the truck here. It's all work in progress. Usually is. Yeah, it's easier to just siphon this shit like this. Get one of them ball hoses. It's got a marble in the end. You just shake it in the can and... When you're done, you tilt the can up and get the last bit of it out with the hose, obviously. Easy peasy and it's pretty quick. Better than fiddling with these new government cans. <laughs> 